ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Albion Esports channel. Today, um, I'll be casting along with my co-cast, Jay. My name is Sophie, and we're going to be casting the first Overwatch game of the competitive season for them. So today, we have our first game against Albion and Lawrence Tech. I see we're loading into our first map. We're going to Nepal first. King of the Hill map. First two captures. All right, so I, I see the D.Va get picked up for Albion. I know that Technical Koala is quite skillful in the D.Va. I'll be excited to see how he utilizes his defense matrix. And I also see, ooh, I see a Tracer locked in for Mr. Empty Grin. Quite excited for that. We're still on waiting for Tracer. There we go. Now we there are we the go. actual team coming. We can see who people choose now for the first round. I'd, I'd actually be really excited to see Empty Grin on the Tracer, you know? Had a great Worlds performance, you know, you were able to see Shanghai, we were able to see Nero even from the San Francisco Shock perform really well on it, and honestly, I feel like the Tracer would be really strong right now, and I know that Empty Grin could probably perform on it. We'll see what the initial team comps here in a couple seconds. Oh. Here we go. Looks like we opted actually not to lock in the Tracer. Oh. Symmetra to start with. That we'll see whether that's just to teleport out or whether he'll stay on the Symmetra for this first point. Interesting. All right. Well, it looks like we are going to get started here. In five, three, two, one. All right. It looks like we are going to teleport the team out, and then the switch to the tracer that we are talking. Yeah, I'd really like to see Empty Grin on this Tracer, but I really like utilizing that teleporting to point for the team here. Albion gets to the point first. Let's see how this first fight went down. All right. There's a first pick for Albion. I really like that. Getting the early lead here is going to be really There's instrumental to cementing this Both for them. tanks down now for Lauren. There's four. Yeah. Five. If I'm Albion here, I, I feel completely safe. We have both tanks down. If they want to start a fight, we're going to take it, and we're going to win here. Albion takes the point first. Let's see how Lawrence Tech regroups. Yeah, one thing that I really want to look at here is just the charge on the ultimate. We've already built a shatter. Yes, and the pulse bomb almost gone for Empty Grin as well on that tracer. Albion yeah. playing pretty aggressive here. Going close to the north side Ooh, spawn. That's a really a good tank. doom fist right there. And Zarya goes down. Yeah. Retreat. Yeah. There we go. That's another fight win for Albion. I really like that Doomfist play there. Just getting an early pick, really solidifying that team fight. Lawrence Tech knows they can't take it after that, Lawrence and just Tech switches to a McCree. Ooh. See how that goes. I'd Albion be interested to see how that works. Four ultimates for this fight. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence will just have the one. And if I'm Lawrence Tech here, I really don't see realistically like an all-in here i feel like they really have to pick someone here to be able to win this next team fight i really don't see oh. comes out for Albion first yeah pick already. there's the shatter coming out too another pick Ooh. oh the reinhardt goes down that could be big yeah we see a really good defense matrix here oh. from tactical koala and memos and empty grin the dps for Albion really coming in clutch at the end of that fight yeah, so I mean, it's exactly what we were talking about there. Lawrence Tech tries to initiate when they don't have their ultimates built. Um, they really have to play towards this next fight. I mean, they're going to have hopefully three ults built for this next fight, and all we're looking at is Diva Bomb for Albion. Rally out early to try and get up the point. Oh, Tactical Koala used to Ooh, Empty aggressive. Grin. I like this. Hopefully he doesn't get picked. Right. Oh, Diva Bomb was used. Reinhardt goes down for Albion. This yeah, that was quite like unfortunate. Fight win for Lawrence Tech. Yeah, and Lawrence Tech was really smart with that team fight, See, recognizing. Grin can still get a touch here. He opts not to and goes back to spawn to regroup with his team. Lawrence Tech yeah. finally takes the point, but Albion got it to 99%. Yeah, I think Empty Grin realizing there that if he tries to touch, he'll most likely get staggered, and that will result in a deficit in the next team fight. I really like, I mean, you're at 99%. You have a good team comp. You know you've been playing better. And so I feel like them realizing that and Empty Grin knowing that they're just going to get the point back hopefully on the next fight. Ooh, Last big one. engage here. The All right. Ooh, they were able to pick the Brig early there. 
Empty green goes down. Yeah, empty green. Back to Koala D Max. That's bad. High yep. moon comes out for Lawrence Tech. Doesn't get anyone. Ooh, big Rhino stun there. Stuns, and that looks like it's going to be another team fight win for Lawrence Tech. Koala yeah. Still in the mix. Just goes down now. Yeah, and if I'm I'm looking at that so fight and I'm Albion, I just see, unfortunately, the the team fight wasn't there from that. You know, I look at the ultimates used from both teams there, and Albion just didn't have as many ults up. I mean, they were able to use them, and they were able to use them effectively, but the timing just wasn't there, and Lawrence was able to take advantage of that. Mimos just switched to a junk grab, so we'll see how that plays out in this next big fight. Interesting. I mean, going into this next fight, we have Pulse Bomb and Shatter. I think Albion could really leverage this if they were able to get a big shatter here. Old Zarya ult comes out. That's bad. All right, Ryan's low. Out, Ooh. Saves. McCree goes down. Reinhardt down for Albion. Yeah, unfortunately, Reinhardt gets Old picked big there. Shatter. Doesn't get any. Albion gets three picks. Yeah, the Diva bomb gets used there. Be, in a good this should be really here. big if the Diva. They should get the point here. Let's see. Can Lawrence Tech get a touch before the point goes And around? if I'm Lawrence Tech, I feel like I have to switch the ball here just to Tech, but they do it. They could not, not get there. there in time. Takes first point of map one on Nepal. Yeah, and I, I really think that was a dominant showing from Albion there. Just really getting out early. I mean, that teleport out to the point was really big. Making sure you get early point control. And Lawrence Tech was able to contest it for two team fights, but when you're sitting on 99%, you only have to win one. Good first push by Albion. Lawrence Tech got in there and almost pulled it off, but Albion got back and won a team fight and secured the first point. Yeah, and if I'm Albion, I feel pretty confident in this next one. I mean, it looks like we're gonna bring out some new. Ooh, it looks like we're gonna we're gonna be using that Blizzard. I, I'll be really interested to see how we utilize May. Yeah, it does look like it. Unfortunately, we're on the Lawrence Tech, so we can't see it. Starts with the McCree this game. We'll see how that goes. Both and sides still have a Reinhardt. Same tanks for both teams. And how did you feel about that McCree switch? Do you feel like they were able to properly utilize him there? I think he did well, better than the Genji was doing. But I don't know if McCree was the best option. Yeah. I mean, I, I just didn't really see a lot of, you know, big plays out of him. And unfortunately, I think that did lead to an Albion victory. Ooh. Looks like, ooh, that was a really good wall there. Couldn't quite capitalize, but Albion takes the point first again on this map two. Yeah, I think that's really important. Albion seems to really thrive here when they can get the point first and then really focus on defending it. Um, and Lawrence Tech does not seem to be very well, like good at, ooh, yeah. Opting to stay on the Symmetra. And we have a full shatter built for Mr. Daytrix, so we'll be hopefully looking for a big shatter here in the next fight going into this. It's the Lawrence only Tech ultimate. Off yeah. Yeah, but Let's this see how they come back. This regroup is gonna cost them. I mean, we're looking at fifteen percent on that point since the end of that team fight, and I I don't know. This is exactly what happened last game, and even if they are able to pick the fight, I really don't see Lawrence Tech being able to break through this wall that Albion's setting up. Quite literally, I mean, we have the May. <laughs> there goes the wall from Kulosku. Let's see. They Looking got for two a big. Off There's the shatter. Uh, Albion is low. They've got four. Oh, Tyre takes out the Symmetra and the Dmac. Yeah, this is. That's big. The Diva got taken out by the McCree there. Yeah, I still and. I don't think that they'll be able to contest here because they've only got their two DPS. Yeah, and if I'm Albion, I, I see that trade pretty well. I mean, you you come out for a two for three. Uh, Lawrence Tech still can't t contest the point, and we've while we've gone through that whole debacle, progressed another 30% on our point meter here. Oh, here we go for a big engagement. There comes Blizzard the gets the used. And Blizzard, double DPS we have the Albion. beat up, but it's not getting used. The beat's Four, been used. Five picks here. Jess the Moira left. Yeah. She'll be staggered, probably it looks like. Yeah. Teleporting onto point, she's dead. There we go. Perfect, yeah. perfect the, stagger by Albion there. Yeah, and if I'm looking at Albion the here. Oh, Shatter comes out. Yeah. Does not very much of anything, and Albion takes map one, 2-0. Oh. Yeah, I think that was really, you know, commanding performance by Albion there. You know, this comp seems to be something they've really worked on. They knew what they were doing. The Shatters were on point. The bombs were well utilized. Even the May there, you know, those walls were very precise, used to get some very good picks. And 
for me, I just see this. Um, I see this game very, very dominantly taken by Albion. What are your thoughts, Jay? It was Albion's map pick, so that could have influenced a bit. We'll see how Lawrence Tech does on their map pick now. We'll see what they choose and how they do on that. Yeah, I mean. I just like looking at some of these stats. 75% kill participation for Tactical Koala. That's, well, that's true, but Diva is a bit of a cheat code for elimination. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, that defense matrix is really dominant. Like we said, we saw it at Worlds. You know, Shanghai Dragons were able to pilot that very well. And I just, you know, I think that when we look at Tactical Koalas, you know, his flights were very on point. The defense matrix ate some really important things. And I think we were able to pull out pretty far ahead with just su the support coming off of that Tactical Koala. Pretty good start for Albion, winning their first map of their first competition. We'll see. I think it, that Lawrence Tech has chosen King's Row for the second map of this match. What are your thoughts on King's Row here? If, if I'm Lawrence Tech, why am I picking King's Row? Well, we'll see. It'll be really interesting to see what comes out. I think Albion is in favor of King's Row as well. So that should it should be a very interesting map. King's Row is a very good map. and respected by a lot of the Overwatch community. So, we'll see how it turns out. Yeah. And if I'm Albion here, do I look at switching up my team comp? Or, I mean, you saw it work pretty dominantly. I mean, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. I mean, we saw the dominance that they displayed in game one, and Lawrence Tech didn't know how to deal with it. And for me, if I'm looking at that, I say you run it again. I mean, like, I don't see any reason not to. I mean, we got to see Empty Grin on that tracer, like we were talking about. We were able to use the teleport out of base and then switch. He was still able to make it to the point in time for those first skirmishes, and Lawrence Tech just really didn't have any way to deal with it. We do see a sub here for Albion as Dog Guard comes in for Tactical Koala on King's Row. Let's see how that works out. And yeah. no subs for Lawrence Tech so far, so, so we'll start loading in King's Row. It's kind of interesting. You know, this sub is not something I was really expecting here from the desk. I mean, we saw that dominance from Tactical Koala with those defense matrices, bombs, and just all-around team play. If I'm Albion here, I don't know why I'm switching. We'll see. It could be a specialist role that they want to play as a tank. That's very true. All right, so we're loading into King's Row. Let's, uh, let's see what uh, Albion can pull off here. What are your um? What are your predictions for this one? Who do you th who do you think's pulling away from this match? I think that second map of map one, where Albion came and took a point, and Lawrence Tech never even took it once. I think that was a huge dominant force for Albion. I think I think they're gonna take it here, but it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Maybe Lawrence Tech can come back on their map pick. Yeah. I think, you know, they picked this map. They're obviously comfortable. They're obviously confident on it. But, I mean, the same could be said for Albion. I mean, when you said it yourself, King's Row is a pretty well-played map. And, you know, I have to imagine that Albion's done some kind of practice, some kind of comp teaming practice on here. And I would imagine that both teams are going to be comfortable. The question is, is Lawrence Tech more comfortable? And can they utilize their map choice here to get an advantage on this? I just realized there was another sub for Albion as Pink Shanks comes in for Kolonsky wants to pull. So... All right. in both the tank and support department for Albion. And it looks like we are actually going to see some switches from Albion here. If we look at um, Mr. Datrix, it doesn't look like he's on the Rhine anymore. Instead, Dog Guard is on the Rhine. And Albion on defense decides to opt with double shield and Ash as the sniper being pocketed by the Mercy right now, as well as Junkrat as the other damage. Character. Yeah. And if I'm Ash here... I'm just looking for some really big supportive plays. Um, you know, having to be pocketed by the Moira and having that double shield allows for some really good defensive play from Albion. Yes, the oh, there's the first pick. Yeah. Damage increase. And that was just that was just beautiful. Getting that first pick once again. I, if I'm Lawrence Tech, I just don't think I can step up. Oh. Yeah, I really don't think Lawrence Tech can step up to this. Yeah, and I think this is just, ooh. Lawrence Tech goes into the side room. Oh. Ash up to the high ground. Lawrence Tech is in that side room. Trying if to push out now. The soldier yeah. gets taken out by a 
Yeah, and Empty Grin is just honestly dominating the boards here. These picks are just instrumental in making sure the boards guy cannot step up to the board. Uh, Yeah, and if I'm and if I'm Lawrence Tech, I don't I don't even know how to recover from that. You know, being able to see that tire just dominantly take out four members of your team, knowing what happened on the last map, how do you step up? I mean, we're looking at double shields. We have Mercy pocketed by it, and we have the Mercy pocketing the Anna, and I just feel like Albion's pretty steadfast in this defense right now. I don't know how Lawrence Tech can break through. Oh, there goes the shatter, or not the shatter. My apologies. The bongo for Albion, which damaged. Lawrence Tech opting to go into that side room again. Let's see how that works out. He just takes out Hanzo here. Yeah, and I, I really don't know how I like this side room from Lawrence Tech here. Albion has shown that they can defend here, and I with the double shield, I don't know how to break through. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, this is a big fight. That is, yeah, that's two picks we've seen. It looks like, yeah, and unfortunately, unfortunately that Ash was revived just to be killed again. Yeah, if I'm Albion there, I... I think that's really rough. I mean, you dedicate quite a few alts. I mean, Lawrence Tech puts some of them on the line too. I mean, but right now, the only alt on the board is the B. And, I mean, if Albion can really leverage that. Ah, uh, uh, I apologize. I thought he was still on the Lucio. And it looks like Don Wizzy is opting for the Hanzo. Window comes out for Albion, that could be big. Oh, the drag doesn't get any. I mean, we're looking at two alts here for Lawrence Tech, if I'm dead. Shatter and Lessons, there goes Shatter, but he gets taken out before any impact can be done. That's for Albion. Yeah, we have Dragon online here. I wonder if we'll be seeing it out of Lawrence Tech. Don Wizzy, oh, unfortunately Don Wizzy is picked. There's two picks, three picks for Yeah, Don Wizzy not letting the dragon rip there. I don't know how I feel about it, but I mean, maybe preserving it for the next team fight, realizing that one's lost, and just not wanting to utilize that ult into this fight. I mean, I can understand that mentality here. Here comes another tire from Beemos, just takes out the lamp. Yeah, this double shield is honestly quite ridiculous on this defense. I mean, we've been able to see Albion level so well in this Bob fight. Empty grid gets a pick on the yeah, ooh, some big ultimates dedicated to this fight on the side of Lawrence Tech. They really want this team fight here. Yeah, and if I'm Albion here, I really want to hunker down, utilize this ult advantage that we right have. Oh, unfortunately, Mizu gets picked. That's really big for Lawrence Tech here. See if they're able to utilize. Still utilizing that. Yeah. Yeah, and one thing that I'd like to look at is this Hanzo has not let the dragon rip. I mean, we've been through three team fights since it's been up, and I just have not seen them utilize. I mean, they haven't needed it. They haven't needed it. But, it might be a good idea, but at this point, you might have been able to get another one. Ooh, empty win. Looking for a champ change here. It looks like we're going to the Widowmaker. Ooh, we get a pick there for Lawrence Tech. Ooh, Nizu gets down. Oh, this is so important. Yeah, we need to heart. Albion needs to hold this for two minutes on the brink. It looks like. Yeah, it looks like Albion's just trying to get a. Ooh. 
Albion does win a team fight and will be able to push back a little, but the car is less than three meters away from a final point. A minute and 45 seconds left. And once again, we look at this whole team fight and the dragon has not been used. I mean, if I'm if I'm Lawrence Ted, I would really like to see it get used. I mean, you only have to push it just a few more meters. It's see if they can implement it into this push fast. Yeah. This is big. We're looking at this team fight. Ooh. Oh, no. Yeah, this was a really big engagement for Albion. Being able to hold here and make sure that they cannot take this point. I mean, we're looking at a minute left. I mean, we've been able to successfully hold it since that 2.30, and I don't know if Lawrence Tech will be able to push it. I mean, maybe if the dragon gets used, it's still up. I would love to see Don Wizzy let it rip, but he just isn't. I mean, we have three yeah, alts. Yeah, that's... Let's see how this works out. This is a really big dedication. Oh, they lose one of their tanks, though, and a support goes down. There goes the dragons finally take that dog guard on the right arm. Yeah, and I mean, the dragon was used well, it was applied well, and I don't know. This is, this is contested here, but it looks like we're just trying to get a big touch. Ooh, that was a big pick for Albion here on their defense. We're looking at, yeah, we are at, this is 10 seconds left, and if Albion can solidify this defense here, I, I see them walking away with this. I mean, yeah. Albion holds at 67 and point four seven meters. Almost got it all the way. But Albion has a chance to take it on their attack. Yeah, and if I'm Albion, I feel I feel really good about that defense there. Being able to hold at 67 for two minutes is not an easy task, and just being able to not only bait out some of those ultimates from Lawrence Tech, but being able to utilize your own in those team fights, I feel like was really instrumental to them being able to hold that strong with so much time left. I think that was a great defense for Albion, although it would have been nicer to try and stop them a little. They got so close with a ton of time left, and Albion was still able to hold without them getting all the way. Let's yeah. see how Albion starts on the attack here. Yeah, and it looks like we've opted for the Lucio on Pig Shanks. We've also brought in the McCree for Empty Grin. Um, Let's see how this works out. We've got a McCree on both sides. Reaper is out of the bay. Yeah, and uh, Lucio obviously worked with them really well in map one. Um, obviously, it was piloted by someone else. Um, I'm very confident Pig Shanks will be able to perform just as well. And I honestly feel like this composition is going to be quite strong for Albion on the attack. Let's see how they do in the first fight. Remember, Albion aiming the floor. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, they were able to get quite a pick, but Albion takes one with them. That's two down for Albion. Oh, Deatrix falls. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, and unfortunately there, Daedrix was staggered, so they had to lose a little bit of time there waiting for him to spawn. Looks like they're going to take this engagement. Yeah, yeah unfortunately that wall is just a little misplaced and not able to get a pick. Oh, uh, oh we got a two for one. Oh, that's really big for Albion Esports here. Being able to pick off the Reaper there was immensely important by Empty Grin. Team and kill by Albion. This is quite a dominating performance. Once again, I'm, I'm getting chills. This this looks a lot like map one to me. Albion is just so dominant when they're hot. And this performance, this is such a great performance coming out of the gates for Albion. I mean, this is the first game of the season. They have to be feeling good about this performance. On that team fight that they won, Albion was able to have the first point without the second. 
Yeah, and it looks like we even have a Shatter online. I don't... Shatter's still up for Albion here. I wonder if they're gonna opt... Oh, unfortunately, three are down for Albion. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, we do have a Death Blossom up for Lawrence Tech, but we're looking at the ult on both teams here. Albion having a slight lead, having three. We have the Blizzard. Yeah, and if I'm Albion here, I feel pretty confident. You know, we know the May Walls have been on point, and we know the Blizzards have been quite good. I'd really like to see them push this advantage. I mean, Albion seems dominant when they're on the offensive. They seem to be very confident, and Lawrence Tech seems to be cracking a little bit when we get into these big offensive plays. Oh, there's the Shatter. Quite big. So many ultimates dedicated. Yeah, there's the Blizzard. Blizzard was able to pick the Spook Honey there. Yeah, and it's... Oh, that was so big. Yeah. Oh my gosh, getting two alone on the May. Yeah, and if I'm LBM, that, that team fight, I mean, you, you lost in the beginning, you were able to regroup with that Blizzard after the Death Blossom, you were able to pick Spook Honey, and you were able to push your advantage. But I mean... Ooh. Yeah. And Empty Grin is just so instrumental here. Being able to get those early picks and just dominate the team fight. Not quite dead, managed to get away. Empty Grin down around the end. Empty Grin notably has a high new build though, so hopefully we'll be seeing that in the next team fight. But it looks like we're just gonna keep fighting. Oh, Yeah, if I'm Albion here, I'm looking at the May. Blizzard's about to be up. We have the High Noon. We have Shatter. I mean, we, the other team's looking at 90% built on the Shatter. They have their High Noon, but the Death Blossom is at 37%, and that's quite an offensive ultimate. And I don't know if Lawrence Tech can take this engagement without a Death Blossom from the Reaper. I mean, the last two big fight. Ooh, big. Yeah, that was quite a big Shatter there. Oh, High Noon dedicated from Empty Grin. Down. Yeah, we're, this is quite a big trade. But we have a shatter build for Albion here. I don't know if they're going to need dedicated. I mean, it seems they like they're pretty the solid. They win the team fight. Yeah, if I'm Albion, I think this is just a point right here. I don't know if they can touch. No, they, they simply cannot contest it. Albion has a little bit more time by about 30 more seconds than Lawrence Tech did with a similar time bank going into the last point. Yeah, Lawrence Tech opting for these tight corners. They really seem to think that they can get those. And unfortunately, it hasn't window been put. Ooh, big, big wall, wall there from the May. Albion has the shatter. We'll see if the Reinhardt can make use of it here. We don't have a shatter from the other team, and a big shatter here would dominate this team fight. Oh, there's the shatter. And this is just a complete team fight. Domination from Albion. This is simply ridiculous. Yeah, if I'm out in the... And with the Death Blossom up, that is an important pick right there. If I'm out in the... Less than 10 meters to touch. Yeah, out. Oh my god, there's the Blizzard. We've stunned two from Lawrence Meg. Yeah. High noon has been dedicated here. Albion, Albion is able to take map two. Heck, big Mimos coming out huge on the May on this offensive for Albion. Yeah. And if I'm me, I, I dedicate this game right here to the Mimos. I, I see so many big tires. I mean, just the way he was able to interact with so much against them and just be able to get these big team fight ultimates that honestly won them and then the Falcon didn't have to dedicate anything else to them. They almost had a, a great round of junk out on defense and then came out on May.
have to see justice done. Second. Look at that. Meme. Look at me right here. Thirty three objective kills. Fifty five eliminations. That is simply ridiculous. Back to Albion's map pick, and Morris Tech is going to have to reverse sweep him here in this best of five if they want to win here. All right. So. If I am Lawrence Tech here, I'm down 2-0, how do I stop this Onslaught coming out of Albion? I mean, we see the dominant performance. Multiple people are skilled on this Reinhardt. The Shatters are coming out well. I don't know how Lawrence Tech can approach these objectives with the solid walls that Albion is putting up. Excuse me, uh, it is actually Lawrence Tech's map pick, and they picked Yalto for their map. But, yeah, I think one thing that Lawrence Tech needs to do is they need to utilize their alts more, and... We really saw that on the offense, that Don Wizzy just held that Dragons for way too long, and that could have been big in them winning, but they were not able to get that final push, which led Albion to be able to take the map. Yeah, and if I'm Don, Don Wizzy there, by the time I used a Dragon, I could have built an entirely new one. It doesn't matter if I'm, like, getting kills with it, it's the ability to split up a team fight with that massive AoE ultimate, and being able to try to get picks with it. I feel like Lawrence Tech isn't utilizing their alts, and when they are, Albion's just better at being able to deal with the outcome of them. Albion is just oppressive with those shatters, oppressive with the blizzards. I mean, we saw the Maywalls coming out of Memals, and they were disgusted. They, Albion was able to get a free pick almost every time he put up the wall, and then they just had the team fight after. We are loading into Rialto. No subs for Lawrence Tech, but Albion decides to go back to the original roster with Tactical Follow back in and tank and Wasku back in at the Yeah, and I think just keeping them off their game, I mean, you beat them on map one, you just put two subs in, they weren't able to react, switching back, you know you took map one, get the same roster solidified, Tactical Koala is a beast on the D.Va, getting that defense matrix in these fights again, and I feel like, honestly, Albion's gonna come out with an oppressive map win once again. We'll see if Albion can pull off the 3-0 in their first competition ever. Ooh, this is an interesting team comp. What do you think? Uh, Albion looks like they're running a Bar of Mercy comp here, as well as a Dwarf Mercy. Very interesting. I mean, I haven't seen Emos play it, but if there's one thing I'm confident in, Emos can play it. I mean, we saw him perform well in the main, we saw him perform well in the main. This guy has shown that he is here to play, and he knows how to play. I'll lean up the double shield again, but the Sigma instead of a Reinhardt. I think you meant that. Like well, I'll be an S2 shield. Oh, sorry, that was my bad. Looking at the wrong thing. Here it goes. Here it goes. See if it's attack coming out on attack here. They just don't whiz him back on the Genji. We'll see how that works out. Last time he started with Genji, he had to switch a pair of them.
big ultimates dedicated to this fight here. Two down for Albion, but one down Spooky Honey caught out. Yeah, Feebles unfortunately fell in that engagement. Oh, two down for Lawrence Tech here as we get to high noon. So unfortunate, the high noon was able to completely turn that team fight around, and Lawrence Tech has taken five members of Elvis down. I don't even feel comfortable. I mean, Meemles is still up, and we've seen what this man could do. I mean, what do we do? Hey? Walking up. All better. Heroes never die. Yeah, this is really big here. Being able to go for high and completely destroy Lawrence Tech here. We have five from Lawrence Tech, and that's just what we were talking about. I mean, Albion is so dominant on this offense. I mean, they just can't even. Every time Lawrence Tech thinks they win a team fight, Albion's able to regroup, re solidify their plan, and take a team fight and win. Lawrence Tech got within four meters. I mean, we're looking at 30 seconds, though. I mean, if Albion could put up one of these big defenses, we have three ultimates. Longo coming out from Albion. Damage to the whole team. Let's see how it goes. Lawrence Tech needs to push and win a point Lawrence now. Tech has 20 seconds to make this happen, but Albion doesn't look like they want to let it happen. Four down. Lawrence Tech has lost the team fight. Don Wizzy does not have high moves. I don't know how he can. I don't know how they do that. They need to get back in five seconds. I don't even think they can get a touch. They, they switch to the rat for the touch, but they cannot Albion get it! Albion has got that one. Albion has a fair less than a hundred meters to push on this first point. Just to get the map. They don't even have to cap the first point. And then Albion will win 3-0 in their first match of competitive play. Yeah, and if I'm Albion here. I am so confident. I mean, Lawrence Tech has shown that they don't know how to deal with the offensive pressure that Albion is putting out. I mean, we're looking at Empty Grin, we're looking at Meemles. These two are really star players, and the amount of free picks that they're allowed to get is insane. I mean, Tactical Koala and Daytrix are putting a brick wall in front of Lawrence Tech, and this is just allowing Empty Grin and Meemles to free cast. Basically, I mean, they're not getting touched. They're allowed to shoot and do whatever they want from the back line, and Lawrence Tech just can't do anything about it. We see Don Wizzy shift to the Doomfist. And Spooky Honey is on the Bastion. What? Now. Yeah, if I'm Lawrence Tech here, I don't know why I'm picking the Bastion. I mean, I don't know. Ooh, Albion. We're doing some changes to Emperor back on his Tracer here. Was able to perform very well with this on map one. And it seems like Nemos is actually on the Genji. Gonna show Lawrence Tech how Genji should be used. I mean, in all honesty, Nemos, I mean, we've seen him block in someone different on every map. I mean, this this guy is ridiculous. I mean, the amount of damage that he is able to output, the amount of elimi eliminations he's able to get, Lawrence Tech has to be afraid of this guy. But Bastion, oh, the he was slept there. Slept. I mean, honestly, by yeah, and that's one of the big problems of Bastion. Yeah. 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 Bastion takes out the Tracer. Oh, that's a big Bastion pick. Bastion Bastion for Alvin. Bastion 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 yeah, so if I. Ooh, Empty, Empty Grin on the Sombra. We haven't seen this from Empty Grin. I'd really like to see some big EMPs here for this map domination. We'll see if. Albion even needs time to build an EMP, yes. He's just going to try and loop around and get a hack on this bash. Really make it should be an easy team fight for Albion. Yeah, I mean if you can land a neutral hack, it's sometimes hard to do. But if you can get it on the bastion, I don't know how you do this team fight. Whoops. Really just shielding that, that bastion. Empty Grim's gonna have to teleport out. Genji is up. We're looking at a 98% on the Ooh, Empty Grin gets picked. This is not looking good. But Tactical Koala uses his Diva. Diva also there. Yep. Go. Get back to that. 
he has his ultimate here. I'd really like to see him utilize it well. There's Nanoblade that can't come out for Albion. With Ana and the Genji ults paired together. We do have a Bastion ult ready. That can be big if we're able to do that. Nanoblade gets placed on Interesting. Yeah, and this is just ridiculous. Albion is able to take this team fight quite handily. And I. Yeah. But if I'm Lawrence Tech here, is contesting enough? I mean, you've shown that you cannot stand this pressure. They pick the Daedrix there. That is a massive EMP there from Empty Grin. They got three. They got two. Oh, we get the resing on Spook Honey. We'll see if it comes off. We were able to res, but three down. But but five are up for Albion. It seems like Tactical Koala is able to defense Matrix some of these big plays. And Albion takes their first match of their competitive season. And Jay, I just, I mean, it, it, it all comes back to it. Albion was able to put pressure on Lawrence Tech that they just weren't able to handle. Here we see a big ultimate here. I mean, this was this was massive. I mean, Tactical Koala knows what he's doing. He can play D.Va. He can play other, other champs here. And we can see him successfully on all things. I mean, if I'm looking over here at Albion right now, this is massive. Gets all ten, gets ten votes from yeah. sides. And I think, you know, we kept every game, we kept talking about different people. I think Albion is just a really put together team right now. I mean, we were able to see good plays out of Tactical Koala, good picks out of Empty Grin, Mimos was on fire, Nizanu was great supporting the back line, Datrix had great alts no matter what champ he was on, and Colossus was also just in the back line making sure that Albion was able to fight through. Lawrence Tech did some good things, but unfortunately weren't able to capitalize. Lawrence Tech had some good engagements. They were winning some team fights, but I think they weren't quite able to leverage those team fight wins. I would have liked to see some more of, you know, separating those respawn timers, making sure you're staggering. You don't always have to get that kill. I thought Lawrence Tech did good on their map of King's Row. That map was super close up until the very end going into overtime, I believe, for both teams, but Albion was just able to take it for that map and the other ones as well. Good yeah. Good match by Lawrence Tech, but Albion managed to get to the victory. Yeah, and Lawrence Tech, they did a good job. I mean, Don Wizzy was consistently putting out damage. I mean, we saw the Bastion pocket work in the beginning. It won them the first team fight. Um, however, once we switched, to, once they switched to the Sombra, being able to get the neutral hacks, get that big ENP to win the game, Lawrence Tech was very good. But they were able to not quite capitalize on a lot of those things. And so, thank you guys for tuning in to the uh, first competitive Overwatch match of the season. We're going to be heading out. My name is Soapy. I'm Jay. And Albion takes their first game to go 1-0 and into this new season of Albion Britz Esports.